So, Chad, let's just get started. What is your number three movie of 2017? A lot of great movies out there this year, but I went with Coco. Now, this is the latest from Pixar, I know. But um, it's this really beautiful story set during the uh, Day of the Dead or Dia de los Muertos celebrations in Mexico. This young boy named Miguel, he really loves music, but his family forbids it. But then when he's accidentally, magically transported into the land of the dead, he actually gets to uh, meet some of his ancestors and try to find this long lost relative and learn more about the history of music in his family. So it's this really gorgeously made film. Uh, there's really catchy songs that are, are, are with it too. So it's a Disney Pixar collaboration, but it does have a really strong Pixar identity. I mean, you can never really go wrong with Pixar, am I right, Chad? That's true. So I really liked it. Great for kids, of course, but then also great for adults who are looking for a really nice, uh, even sophisticated story about family and collective memory and music. So I really like Coco. What's your number three? I would say my number three movie of 2017 is Wind River. Um, it's directed and written by Taylor Sheridan. He's kind of been on a hot streak lately. Right. His last three movies were uh, that he's written were Sicario, which was a great movie, yeah. Hell or High Water, which was great nominated movie. for an Oscar for screenplay, and now Wind River. Um, Wind River takes place on an Indian reservation in North Dakota. It stars Jeremy, River, Jeremy Renner, who is a conservation officer, and he ends up discovering a body of a dead Indian woman. Right. Um, and along the way, the, uh, Elizabeth Olsen comes in as the FBI agent who gets called in because of you know the murder that occurred on the Indian Reservation. Um, it's a great movie for the fact that um, it kind of gives a pretty good portrayal of what it's like to live on an Indian Reservation. Um, great cinematography. Like I said, great actors. You also have the actor Graham Greene. He's a great character actor. You would probably recognize him. But yeah, it's just a really well shot, really well written. Um, very straight to the punch. It was basically an hour and 30 minutes of we're going to get in there, tell the story, and then we're going to get out. That's yeah. one reason why I loved it. So I like didn't drag on too I long. like movies like that. <laughs> but it was just really well done. He's on a hot streak. So right. if you see Taylor Sheridan's name on any kind of film, TV series project, I recommend watching it. As do I. So my number two <laughs> is a ghost story. So it's this is basically, it's not a uh, spoiler to say that someone dies in this movie what? and then takes the form of a ghost with a, with a bed sheet uh, over it. So it sounds ridiculous, right? But this ghost actually, uh, you, you, you see it uh, actually stay in the house where it died and then jump back and forth in time to see the people and situations that go on um, in this place uh, in different time periods. It's actually a real quiet, sort of meditative, um, really sort of transfixing film about uh, uh, about the uh, the vastness of time, and even and grief, and how we deal with with loss, and and wrestle with uh, people that we've lost. So uh, it may look ridiculous on the on the cover, but uh, I really uh, highly recommend that you check it out. It's really short as well. It could be one of those movies that could be three hours long, but it's not. It really just like when we gets to the point, it does it really well. So my number two movie of 2017 is the movie Logan, starring Hugh Jackman. It is the kind of follow-up to the trilogy of Wolverine movies, which is a spinoff of the X-Men series. Um, directed by James Mangold, who I actually really like. Looking back on his previous films, I actually realized I like most of his films. <laughs> Um, like I said, it's just it's the it's the third film in the Wolverine trilogy series. It's kind of his send off. Um, kind of Hugh Jackman has pretty much said he's done playing this character now, so it's kind of his send off with this character. Um, you could call it a modern western. You could call it a great buddy road trip because it also stars uh, Professor X um, by the great actor Patrick Stewart. Patrick Stewart, who does a great performances. There's been talks of him maybe possibly being nominated for an Oscar for it when it wow. first came out. Um, just really well written, really well done. I will warn you, it has an R rating. Um, that is also one reason why I kind of like the film because <laughs> it's it's actually true to the nature of the comic book series because. Wolverine's comics were very, very violent. <laughs> very violent, and this movie has a lot of violence in it. So, once again, really well way to send off Hugh Jackman as the character of Wolverine. So, Chad, what is your number one film of 2017? Number one film is called The Florida Project. Now, this just, uh, uh, it's not on DVD yet, but it's by uh, the writer director Sean Baker, who famously 
uh, made his previous film, Tangerine, exclusively on an iPhone, which was pretty cool. Uh, he uses more than an iPhone for this one, um, but it's, it still maintains a sort of realistic documentary style of filmmaking that he takes to this story, um, set in a motel just on the outskirts of Disney World, where there's a lot of uh, low-income residents struggling to make ends meet every week. And we, the film follows this uh, six-year-old girl named Mooney, who's very energetic, very precocious, a little bit of a scamp sometimes. Um, but we follow her and her friends throughout this one summer as they goof off, they get in a little bit of trouble, they have fun. But then they also are exposed to the harshness of this uh, lifestyle that um, they're, they're set up in with, with their parents. And um, the film can be hard to watch sometimes. Mooney and her sort of very irresponsible young mother uh, make some decisions that are uh, you know, reckless, borderline criminal sometimes. But that's really the compelling part of this film is that you, you get to see this sort of unseen part of America, especially close to the quote unquote happiest place on earth. It's a really interesting contrast. Yeah, that's cool. And it's it's a sort of mosaic like film with all these pieces of scenes that put together into something really beautiful. And, and the ending too is a bit of a surprise and a real gut punch, but I really loved it for that. Well, you sold me on it. I'm <laughs> dying to watch it now. All right. What is your number one movie? So my number one movie of 2017 is The Disaster Artist, written, directed, and stars James Franco. Jimmy Frank. James Franco. He's, he's <laughs> awesome in this movie. Um, so the movie is actually based on a book called The Disaster Artist, and the book is based on the making of the worst movie ever made in Hollywood called The Room, starring Tommy Wiseau and the author of the book, Greg Sestero. They, they become friends as they're struggling actors in San Francisco, and it kind of follows them going for their dreams, reaching for, you know, the struggle, becoming a famous actor in Hollywood. They're not making it a movies, TV, so they decide to make their own movie. And by doing this, they make literally the one of the worst movies ever made in Hollywood history. The Room, yeah. It is so bad that it's comical. <laughs> um, but like I said, um, James Franco does a really great job of becoming the main character, Tommy Wiseau. He's very eccentric, he's enigmatic. To this day, people really don't know where he's from, how old he is. Where he got his money. Where he got his money, because he actually funded the making of this right. movie, which was made for millions of dollars. Not cheap. Not cheap, but no one still, even though it looks like it was filmed in someone's basement, no one to this day still knows where he got the money to film this movie. Which kind of, it's, which kind of makes, uh, I don't know, it's just, it's literally probably one of the funniest movies I've seen this year. Um, it's a great performance by James Franco, by Dave Franco, his brother. Um, there's really good chemistry between them as uh, Tommy Wiseau and his friend Greg Sestero. Once again, it's just a great lot ride to go along and see the making of the worst movie ever made in Hollywood history. You sold me on that. <laughs> these were our top three picks for 2017. Look for all these titles here at the Morgan Grove Public Library. Some of these we have currently now on DVD and Blu-ray. Others we will be getting because some of them are still currently in theater. Right. So, once again, I'm Jeff. This is Chad. And we'll be back later on in 2018 to talk about more uh, movies that you can uh, see here at the Morton Grove Public Library. We'll see you then.